All right. The coach has four visits to the mound per pitcher per game. If it's an inning, he's got three. But on the third and the fourth visit, the pitcher's got to be removed. And you guys need to have a little notebook in your ball bag and you mark it down. I can send Mr. Ryan a copy of this form that I have that David and I made up. It's got the game, got the, the innings, and a slash line through it. Shows who your catcher is, who your pitcher is, and if there's any visits. So you can sit there and go, okay, number 27 is pitching. Oh, we're in the second inning, second inning, pitcher. Put, put the number one. I put the number and a one. And then you go through the game, and the, the coach comes out and goes, yeah, I'm gonna, hey, Blue, or coach, that's your fourth visit, you get, kids gotta go. And also let the coach know. You know, as he's leaving the field, going back to the hey, coach, that's your first visit. Most of the time they'll say thank you, or they won't even, under, they won't even hear you. But that's not your problem. You at least announce that, hey, that's your first visit. You keep track of these things. And that way, too, why do you keep track of the catcher per inning? If you start the fourth inning and this is your fourth inning in a row that you've caught, you don't even, even if you go out there and you catch one pitch, the warm-up pitches don't count. You catch one pitch of a batter, now you cannot pitch. So you need to know that. Same thing with the, the pitcher and with the pitch count. How many pitches before they catch, the pitcher can't catch? Forty-one pitches. If he is thrown forty-one pitches, he's not allowed to catch that game. Then go back, go into catch. So that's why you have the pitch count. You know who's the kid, the pitcher is. You know, you go, look, yeah, but we're gonna we're gonna switch out uh, uh, catchers. Who's, who are you putting in there? Uh, we're gonna put our, our pitcher in there. How many pitches did he throw? He's thrown forty-seven. He can't catch. He's already uh, he broken that threshold. So these are things you gotta know and keep track of during that game. I said, so you get a little notebook, and I, like I said, I'll send him the form. He can print it up. He can cut it up and put it in your little, in the, just on a little piece of paper or in a notebook, and you just write it all down. You keep all this stuff. That's what you're doing during the middle of the innings or after, while he's out doing the, uh, his, count, his uh, visit to the mound. You write it down. Because how long do you get to visit to the mound? A minute. A little much, but... You, you, you let him go out there, you write down that, you dust the plate off, and by that time it's about 20, 30 seconds, then you slowly start to walk out to the mound, you get about halfway, come on coach, let's hurry up. And as we're still talking, I will stand in the, in the, uh, the conference with him to make him feel uncomfortable. It's like, okay, it's time to go. And then, you know, everybody goes back. Who can come to the, to the, to the, to the mound? For the, the, the uh, coach visit. Pitcher and catchers. Everybody. Anybody that's on that field is allowed to come to the mound. I, I, I really have a hard issue with that one because none of the field is really, they don't have anything to do unless they're doing a trick play. Mostly it's catcher, pitcher, and the coach. That should be all the ones there. But they allow everybody, all the outfielders can come in and, and, and listen in too. But now you're taking that much time for these guys to get back into position. Like I said, the catcher and any defensive players may join the manager on the mound during the pitch conference. Although there's no, no time limit written in the rules, use your judgment, like I said. You write it down in your book, you clean the plate off, and then you slowly start to walk out. And usually the pitcher or the catcher, yeah, the, catcher, the, the coach is standing at an angle where he's seen me walk up. So I'm already now starting to to come in there and let them know it's time to go. But you don't want them to get like 20, 30 minutes in there because then, like I said, you're just, then it's just getting way too long. By the minute at the most, if it's an injury, injury time, there's no time outside, or there's no time like on that. You let them deal with the injury and, let, and deal with it that way and you just go on afterwards. Um, how many visits do, does an offensive coach get with their players? there is one they get one offensive visit per inning and you want to make you, if, if coach goes time time I want to talk to my batter 
Talks to the and he starts walking back. Coach, that's your one offensive timeout for the inning. You get no more. Be careful, because if you've got a coach that is on the third base side where his team is, don't let him walk up, put his armor on, and talk, walk the player to the, to the plate. Coaches are allowed, to, are, are allowed to be on the field, but they stay in their coach's batter's box. They should not be any more than five to 10 feet outside of that box at any one given time. They gotta be in that area, and they cannot walk the players to the, to the, uh, the plate. And I'll tell the coach, and it'll stop very quickly. Coach, is that your visit to the, your offensive deep, uh, timeout? No, 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 and stay in your batter, or stay in your coach's box. And you can do that with your ground rules. Tell them, you need to stay in your coach's box, period. You cannot walk, you cannot walk up with the player to the bat. And you'll get it, and you, that's why you write it down why he's doing it. Because if you get into a long inning where these guys are just pummeling the other team, hey, who do I need a timeout? I want to talk to my batter. Uh, Coach, you've already had your one timeout. I did? Yes, sir. You did. You had a timeout with player number 27. And there was one out. Oh, oh okay, thanks. And uh, if you go back, now you now you now you know, oh, God, I can't get anything by this guy. But it's those little, little, little things that you got to do to keep the game going and not let it become a mockery. Check swing roll. We've already gone over part of this. He broke his wrist. The bat went through the front of the plate. These are two statements that they think are official interpretations of a strike. They're not. They're a myth. A strike is defined by the pitch that is struck by the batter and missed. Breaking the wrist or the bat moving through the front of the plate or the, bat or the batter's body. It's all in your judgment. Did he, did he offer the bat to the ball? Yes or no? If you say no and they want to appeal, they have the right to appeal to you to ask for your help from your partner. You don't have to give it. But I say good rule of thumb is if once you get into the offense or the uh, the all-stars and the sectionals, if you have a partner, which you should, just ask them. Because like I said, it keeps the, the the bad blood between you guys at a very low minimum. If you you know, I'll ask. Did I go? Did he go? No? Okay, thanks. And you play on. Drop third strike, majors and above. What is it, uh, Memorial Day for you guys, or is it throughout the whole season? Throughout the whole season. All right, because if you do District 8 up north, it's, they started after Memorial Day. So it gets all the kids used to playing that level. They don't do it, so like I said, it's just, it just leaves a difference, so you gotta know the rules for your individual leagues. Drop third goes majors, 50, 70, junior, seniors, and big league. When a drop third is not caught by a catcher, the batter may run to first, provided the first base is unoccupied with less than two outs. Or with, uh, with two outs, let me, let me rephrase that. If it's less than two outs and first base is occupied, they can't run. Which you're gonna have people try to do that because they're gonna try to faint the throw to first to get the guy in first to go to second. I will stop that dead ball, I will just stop it. Runners out. Back first, you can't run. Well, you can't do that. Even though I'm yelling, batter's out, batter's out, batter's out, and the guy is still running, and like I said, I got a big mouth. Everybody in the stadium is gonna hear me scream, batter's out, and they just like, disregard it, I'm gonna push it back, because to me, that's bush league and that's cheating. And I don't get arguments, and I'll take them. But that's the way it just is. If first base is occupied with two outs, they're allowed to run. And the one mechanic that I found from college that I brought down to my senior umpires is, you're standing in a position, you can see everything. Strike three, good catch, it's just a fist. Yep, it's good out. Or, I point down to the ground, if it hits the ground. And it's just down, it's just down right in front of your leg, I just do one of these things. So he knows if he doesn't catch it or he's not sure, I'm letting him know, I'm helping you, it's a, it was a good catch or it hit the ground. And the guy can run from anywhere, including up to just stepping into the dugout. So long as he does not go into dead ball territory, he can run. He can go back, he can run to first from the sideline. If he sits there and he, he, he dropped their strike, and he starts walking away and he gets ready to dugout and they go, hey, I dropped their strike, he can run. He can run right from there. But if he leaves the base, or at least 
fair territory goes to dead ball territory, I usually go, banner's out, because it's not out yet. He hasn't, he hasn't been put out at first, been tagged, or he hasn't left the base yet, or left the playing field. Can you clarify, so if a pitch comes in, hits the dirt, and the catcher catches it? It's a drop third strike. It's a drop third strike. It's yeah. a drop, yeah. If it's not a clean catch by the catcher, from the pitcher to the catcher, and anything else happens, at, even if he catches it and he drops it, it's still a drop third. Yeah. So, like I said, so if it's a good catch, you let your partner know, yep, good catch. Or if you see it hit the ground, I'm pointing. Because a, a lot of times they may not realize it, and the coach isn't paying attention. And like I said, but if your partner says it hit the ground, I step back. He's waiting for the guy to run. I'm waiting for the guy to run. And the minute he walks into the dugout, batter's out. And the coach goes, what? He says, you dropped third strike. Why didn't you tell me? It's not my job to tell you. That's your job as a coach. You're supposed to be coaching, not me. So, like I said, you'll get you'll it, it gets it gets screwy sometimes. And the coach always says, "Why didn't you tell me?" Like same thing. Then miss the base. How come you didn't tell me? Because you didn't appeal. Well, you got to tell me when to do that. Well, how am I supposed to know? It's not my problem. So, 